There's been a lot of hype around ARM laptops in the past year because it basically gives you a less expensive laptop that's thinner, lighter, and packing more battery life than a traditional laptop. And that's exactly what you get with Samsung's Galaxy Book S, which we believe is the best ARM laptop available right now. It's packing a 7 nanometer mobile ARM chip, which is not only powerful, but super efficient, so it doesn't require loud fans to keep it cool, which is one of my personal favorite things about this laptop. You also get incredibly good battery life, rated up to 25 hours running Windows 10. Now if you've seen our review of the Galaxy Book S, you'll know that there are definitely some issues with it, mainly software support and optimizations. So after using this for a couple of days, we got to thinking, what if it makes more sense to simply skip out on this ARM laptop and just go for Apple's iPad Pro instead? Now it's obviously a tablet that doesn't run desktop software, but it's become more and more like an actual laptop in the past year, thanks to tons of software improvements and new apps. Now if you want to learn more about that, be sure to check out our iPad Pro in 2020 review after this video. So to make our iPad Pro comparable to the Galaxy Book S, we had to make sure it's a 256GB model with LTE connectivity, since that's what you get with the Samsung. We also had to get a keyboard case, and the Bridge Pro case for $100 to $150 on Amazon is the best out there. However, it doesn't pack a trackpad, which is an exclusive feature that's coming to the Bridge Pro Plus, which is shipping next month. Together with the regular Bridge Pro keyboard, it brings the price of the iPad Pro to around $1150 to $1200, a couple hundred more than the Book S, and that's with the 11-inch iPad Pro model, not the larger 12.9-inch, which is more expensive and is a better fit as a laptop replacement. Another downside of the iPad is that you don't get true cursor support like you do with the ARM laptop. Now there are rumors that Apple is working on a smart keyboard with the built-in trackpad, which shows that there's a chance Apple will be adding cursor support, but there's no guarantees. Getting into the comparison, the Book S is quite a bit thinner and lighter compared to the iPad Pro with its keyboard case, but the iPad has a much smaller footprint thanks to the 11 inch size. Samsung did an excellent job with their hinge, being easy to open, but sturdy as well. The hinge on the bridge keyboard isn't as easy to open, but it seems like it's even more sturdy, and it has the added benefit of laying flat on a table. Looking at them side by side, the display on the Samsung is obviously much larger, but since it's using a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, you only get a bit more vertical space than on the iPad, which is surprising. And you can obviously remove the keyboard if you want to use the iPad like a tablet for even more vertical screen space. Since the keyboard case has to match the 11 inch size of the iPad, the keys are a bit scrunched together, so it's not as comfortable to type on compared to the Galaxy, which has a full size keyboard with keys that feel better than on the bridge keyboard. They feel really nice and tactile, just what you'd expect from a laptop. And of course, the trackpad on the Book S is the star of the show, with true cursor support with Windows 10. It's definitely not as good as a MacBook trackpad, but it's actually decent compared to other Windows laptops. Now comparing the displays, the iPad Pro's display is quite a bit brighter, and it's very color accurate with DCI P3 wide color gamut. The major downside of the Galaxy Book S is that the screen is very reflective alongside the lower brightness, so it's definitely hard to see the display when you're in a bright room or outside. The Samsung's display is a touchscreen, but it doesn't work nearly as well as the iPad Pro, which features 120Hz ProMotion technology, so it's super smooth and fluid, and this also means that the Apple Pencil gets incredibly low amounts of latency. So the drawing and note-taking experience is excellent. A huge benefit is that the speakers are really nice and loud on the Galaxy Book S, sounding quite a bit louder than on the iPad Pro. However, the quality itself was a bit dull and muted, especially in the highs, compared to the iPad. The front-facing camera for Skyping or using FaceTime is definitely quite a bit better on the iPad. Here's a comparison so you can see it for yourself. 
This is a front-facing video and microphone quality test on the 2018 iPad Pro. This is a video and microphone quality test of the front-facing camera on the Galaxy Book S. In terms of the ports, the iPad Pro features just one USB-C port, which can be used to hook up to external storage drives and hubs that give you extra ports. The Galaxy Book S actually comes with two of them, which makes a huge difference. It also comes with a headphone jack, which is missing on the iPad Pro, so you're definitely getting much better ports on the Samsung. While both of these devices have a matching 256 gigs of storage, you can get up to one terabyte on the iPad Pro if you're willing to pay a couple hundred bucks more. However, the Samsung comes with a micro SD card slot, allowing you to get an extra one terabyte of storage at a much lower price. File management was definitely better on the Samsung compared to Apple's Files app, which just doesn't have as much functionality, but it's been much improved with iPadOS. Even though the battery on the Galaxy Book S is only around 40% larger than the battery on the iPad Pro, it's rated for 25 hours of battery life compared to around 10 on the iPad Pro. Now in the real world, we definitely didn't see that much battery life. We experienced around 16 to 20 on the Galaxy Book S, depending on what you're doing, which is definitely better than the six to eight hours we saw on this iPad Pro. One thing we did notice is that the standby battery life was worse on the Samsung, draining more battery life while not in use compared to the iPad Pro. Now before we talk about software differences, I wanna get into performance. When looking at standard benchmarks like Geekbench 5 CPU tests, the iPad Pro is getting around two times more multi-core performance, which is surprising because it's around a year and a half old. Now we usually run the graphics test in Geekbench, but it doesn't work on ARM laptops, so we had to skip that test. We instead found a graphics browser test called Motion Mark version 1.1, and here, the Galaxy Book S scored 102 points compared to 694 on the iPad Pro, which is a massive difference. We also tested the Speedometer 2.0 browser benchmark, which shows us general browser performance for basically anything on the web. In this test, the Galaxy scored 59.3 points compared to 137 on the iPad Pro, so you're definitely getting a much better web browsing experience on the iPad. Now we actually ran this test on three different browsers on the Samsung. We ran Firefox, the new Microsoft Edge, and Google Chrome. And the new Edge scored the best with that 59.3 score we achieved since it's the most optimized for ARM chips. Now putting benchmarks aside, we decided to compare the real world performance between the two. We first played Asphalt 9 and on the iPad Pro it runs incredibly well, perfectly smooth at 60 frames per second. The Galaxy Book S on the other hand was horribly choppy. The FPS was so low that it was basically unplayable. We also downloaded Photoshop on both of these devices, and even with eight gigabytes of RAM on the Book S compared to four on the iPad Pro, the experience was much more smooth on the iPad. For example, the spot healing brush was much more responsive and quicker on the iPad than on the Book S. Now, while the Samsung does get Windows 10, it doesn't support 64-bit apps, which are basically most of them, including the most powerful apps, so you're very limited in terms of the apps you can use. Another downside is that since it runs Windows 10 and not Android, you don't get access to any mobile apps either. On the iPad Pro, you obviously don't get any desktop programs, but you get access to a massive library of iOS apps, which are all very optimized. A lot of them have also been updated to use more and more of the iPad Pro's power, so they all work very well. This means that gaming is gonna be many, many times better on the iPad than on the Book S. But of course, you don't get a cursor and real full-size desktop apps like the QuickBooks Online app for business owners. On the other hand, the iPad does have its own highly optimized app for that. So it comes down to the final question, is it worth buying an ARM laptop right now when you could just buy an iPad Pro? Honestly, I still think it's a bit too early for ARM laptops, since a lot of the desktop apps haven't been updated for 32-bit or optimized for ARM chips. You just don't get the same software support compared to how many apps you can get right now on the iPad. And since iPadOS was such an excellent update, the iPad Pro actually functions well as a laptop replacement, so we would honestly choose that instead of the Galaxy Book S. Now we are excited for Apple to switch their MacBooks to ARM, because first of all, those MacBooks will have access to all of the great iOS apps 
alongside desktop apps, something that you just can't get on the Galaxy Book S. And Apple's been working very hard to make it easier for developers to turn their 64-bit apps into 32-bit, so the transition to ARM will be quite a bit easier and quicker in terms of software. But for now, the iPad Pro is an excellent choice, but at a slightly higher price since you'll also have to buy the keyboard case as well. So whichever one you choose, we'll have links down in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, check out those two videos right over there and click the circle above to subscribe. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.